What's up, y'all? This is Rainolf here on this Sunday, November 1st, back with another video for you. Alright, so today I'm going to be discussing chaos versus order. So times in your life when you're in chaos, times when you're in order, and how to approach these two different modes of being. Okay? So first, <clears throat> let's describe both. So first, a time of ease is a time of your life where things are going to plan, so to speak, where there are not, because this is relative, there are degrees of each. There are degrees of order, degrees of chaos. Um, for order, we'll also call it ease in this video. So in a time of ease, most of your life is together. Most things are where they uh, should be. Most things are functioning smoothly, and you're able to move in the world how you how you uh, estimate that you would be able to. You're able to move forward with your plans <clears throat> exactly how you think it would work out, right? Or very close to. So you have your assets in order, you have your money in order, you have your living space in order. Most of the things in order, your, your car's working, things are going well, so to speak, right? Whereas chaos, it also comes in different degrees. It can be very chaotic or not very chaotic. Chaos can last for years, where it's brought, there's still pieces of order within that chaos, but most of the period has a lot of uh, suffering, so to speak, and a lot of crazy events going on where your plans are not able to be implemented. If you plan in a period of chaos, this is the main difference. The plan is likely not to be able to work out. The plan is basically times are changing so much around you that the plans can't work because something has shifted by the time that you go to play the plan out. That's essentially what chaos is. So there's going to be three major matrices, three major metrics, or three major uh, strategies that I'm going to give you in both times of chaos and order and contrast the two. So in the times of ease, we want to expand our time horizon. So in a time of order or ease, we expand our time horizon. So if everything's going pretty well, we're sitting back at the house, this is when we want to look forward towards a year or look forward six months or look forward three years. And if you're in a partnership uh, with another, with a, a romantic partnership or some kind of living arrangement with somebody else, this is a good time to set a goal for a medium to long period of time. Like, okay, this year we find ourselves in order. How can we effectively move in this position? Um, how can we set up to maintain order over a longer period of time? How can we grow our assets now that we're in a stable foundation? How can we build more structure around us? How can we do these things? So we want to expand our time frame in this sense because if you're in order and you keep a shrinken, if you keep a shrunken time span in order, then you're likely to not set yourself up for the future and fall into chaos faster. Okay? And remember, neither order nor chaos are bad. Some, and depending on who you are, what your life situation is, what your astrology chart is, all these different things, that can be um, something that keeps you in chaos or keeps you in order more. You know, so everybody's different. Then in chaos, we want to shrink our time horizon. We want Because, like I said in the previous... Um, on the intro is that we don't we can't afford to be planning and to be looking towards the future this will only cause anxiety because all of those plans will be thwarted by the universe by our situations so in chaos we need to shrink our time span down to the level of let's make the right next move here I am in a period of chaos what can I do to make the right next step how can I proceed a little bit further to dig myself out of this chaos right <clears throat> So we shift our time frame from a longer um, expansive timeline to a short timeline in time of chaos, right? This is crucial This will because you have to be extremely stoic in a time of chaos. Since you can't control the future, you have to bring your influence and your sphere of control down to just what can I do in these next hours, in these next minutes, in these seconds, depending on how extreme the chaos is. If Because if you take, for example, a car accident, Right? You have like the one or two seconds right before you see the, the impact, or maybe you have no time. And then you wake up from being blacked out or from, you know, or you come to in the trauma of the shock and the anxiety and you look around. Okay, 
someone's injured. I need to call 911. Um, this person needs to be turned on their side. This person, we need to fish them out of the car. Whatever it is, you know, that's in seconds. So you're making the, the right next move in seconds. That's extreme chaos. In a broader sense of chaos, you just want to make the, the right next move each day. Like there's one or two things I can do today to start to get me out of this chaos type of deal, right? <clears throat> okay, so that's number one. In ease, we expand our time horizons to set ourselves up for the future. In chaos, we shrink our time horizon to make the right next move and get out of the chaos. Anything else will just add to our anxiety, add to our problem if we try to plan further. Okay, now, step number two, or idea number two, strategy number two. We want to shift, each of us is a god. Each of us has many different personalities that we've played out in past lives, that we've played out in the spirit realm as a god, right? <clears throat> so we all are at least 50 different people in one body, right? You may say, well, that's multiple personality disorder. That's just the label that they've thrown on it. So all of us have found ourselves acting differently in different situations. Sometimes they're true to our being. Sometimes they're acts that, that we've learned to get us by in society. The acts that we've learned that get us by in society actually usually create problems. For example, if you go to, your, uh, if you go to a job and at the beginning of the job, you act more passive and more... Um, you act in any way that you think will smooth over and make you seem like a good person for the job. But it's, it happens to not be true to yourself. Then over time, and you've probably seen this if you worked with other people, If imagine, this is just coming to mind, imagine a woman who acts very nice and very whatever when she comes to get the job, and then her employees and her employer three weeks later, she has a big outburst, and now she's acting like a bitch, she's gossiping about everybody, she's yelling at people that she hates them and stuff. This is an extreme example, but these prove our points better. So what happened was she felt like she had to break out. She was being oppressed by the way that she had chosen to act at the beginning because she was playing a false role. She was playing what other people thought she should be like. And because of that uncomfortability, eventually, it's like pulling a rubber band. She snapped back to what she was really like or snapped even further to a more um, potent, aggressive type to try to get out of the type that she had cast herself in. So what we want to do is we want to pick real personalities or at least images that we admire in order to embody. So in a time of peace, a time of ease, we could embody the father or the mother. So someone who's nurturing, who's caring, who's setting up stability. We could embody the scientist or the researcher, if that's what we like. We could start to research topics, use this time to build our knowledge, to build our um, practical abilities, to try new things, right? We could become, we could embody the investor. We could start to say, okay, now that I'm in a time of security, let's start to invest in more land. Let's invest in something that's going to keep us with cash flow or with assets, even if we go into a time of chaos. So let's invest in gold and silver, you know, or you can, and you can play multiple of these roles. You could play the, um, <clears throat> any role you want. You could play the magician or the, or the wizard. You could play the whatever. Whatever roles that you like that's a part of you. When you're in a time of ease, it's a good time to explore new, um, new images and new types, new personalities. But it's also a good time to pick secure ones that you know you're good at <clears throat> and to manifest things you like and then on your small time, try a new role out right <clears throat> then when we get into types of into times of chaos we want to embody usually a completely different type than any type that we would use in ease for long periods of time and so that would be something more like the warrior or the traveler or the um the tough woman that's indomitable unstoppable or the trickster right? Who's trying to get ahead of the universe, who's manipulating little things and finding rabbit or finding um, shortcuts and finding ways to get around uh, tough situations, whichever feels or the wizard. That's maybe when you turn into your, your witch or wizard time to more. But you want to pick a type and, and what you can also do is Im, uh, pick an image of your favorite character. So any hero or anybody like that, especially in times of chaos, 
would be great to keep in mind and to try to embody their principles and embody their uh, character in those periods of time. So, num so that's number two. So strategy number one, shrink or expand your time horizons. Strategy number two, play a different role. Understand that you have many roles and that you should pick one that works for you because identity, especially in chaos, is very um, is one of the only things that you can cling to, that you can use in order to work out of that situation. You have to have some sort of emphasis, some sort of essence in those periods of chaos that helps you fight through it, right? <clears throat> you have to tap into your, your stronger parts, your more indomitable nature. So then, <clears throat> the last strategy is more of a heuristic or a, a mental um, way of thinking about things. And that is, in ease, you should structure your flow. So what I mean by that is, we want to be flowing at all times of our life as much as possible, right? So when you're in a period of ease or order, you want to build <clears throat> structure to hold your flow. Just like a, um, a stream or a pool or a cup. Because you know you want to flow, so you can look ahead like a year, like when you're in a time of ease. You say, okay, I know that I want to have a successful YouTube channel in a year. Or I want to, whatever your uh, situation is. Then you just build in the flow. So you say, okay, you figure out how it flows normally. How many videos can I make in a week comfortably? How can I set them up? At what part of the day do I flow the best? How can I move other responsibilities and ideas around to fit this flow in? How can I act in the video? What should I wear in the video that'll make the flow the best? So you structure your flow, right? So you build it and then you, so you can structure the flow of a day. You can structure the flow of a week. Like I want to go, I want to do yoga three times a week. How do I structure that into my flow? I want to make sure that I do a health cleanse so that my gut is clean once every three months. How can I do that? I want to, you know what I mean? And then you build in all of that flow. <clears throat> so you're giving, your, so one analogy for this, because people are like, why, how do you structure flow? is imagine there's um, five kids that, that are like four years old in a field, right? And you say, okay, kids, go play. Play is another word for flow. Go flow. And they kind of stand around out there, and like maybe one kid picks up a stick, another kid's picking his nose, another girl's playing with her dress and spinning around in a circle. That's all fine. You know, they're all doing their thing. But if you said, here, guys, I'm going to show you a game. What you do is... Uh, it's called tag. Whoever gets tagged has to go tag somebody else. And they can't tag the person who just tagged them for a period of a couple seconds. <laughs> you, maybe you don't tell them that rule. Right? And now all of a sudden you've added structure. And now all four of them are cooperating and flowing together. They're all running around playing tag. And they can sustain that for hours. Where they may have gotten bored and wandered back to you and said, I don't want to stand around in the park. But now you've given them a game. And so you've structured their flow. So you've given them a platform. You've added Saturn. You've added restrictions. Here are the rules of tag. You can only do these things. But that's actually given them a forum, a vessel, a cup for that water to flow better in. Okay? So then when we move into chaos, we want to flow through the structures that we're given, adapting continuously. So changing our flow all the time. But the key is we don't have... The luxury to build our own structures because say I'm um, say you're broke right you're running out of money you're completely out of money now and that's your form of chaos you don't have the luxury to um, to structure going to the grocery store anymore during that period of time so you need to flow through the way of what's the way that I find my next meal you have to flow through it. <laughs> so you have, that's when it's great to start tapping in with source and with your guides and with your spiritual team, with your ancestors, and to getting more into your inner nature because you're going to have to flow and be the magician and figure out how you're going to get through this, right? And it's going to be day by day. How am I going to secure enough money so that I can go to the grocery store again in the future? So instead of lamenting and worrying about that, you need to flow in the moment. So maybe somebody calls you up and they invite you over for dinner. 
if you're not anxious and you don't feel guilty and shitty, you, you say, oh, wow, I've been awarded an opportunity. I'm going to go over and have dinner with them. Thanks so much. You know, and then if the next day nobody invites you for dinner, but you look into the back of your cupboard and realize you have some old rice and split peas or something, right? Then on that day you say, okay, I'm going to make the best rice and split peas that I can. Let's see what spices I have left. And you make the best rice and split peas you can. Then the next day you play it by the day. You see, so in that position, you're flowing through the structures. Not You can create some, but you're going to have to flow between the structures that naturally arise, okay? So that's your three structures. <clears throat> that's your three strategies right there. And I, I hope that's a great video for you guys. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be making more videos. I may make another one tonight. This Sunday just feels good for videos. And um, so this is Rainolf. Hit me up for any kind of, if you want to give me a gift, or if you'd like to uh, schedule a consultation, text me, email me, call me. Everything will be down below the video. And I hope this video helped you guys a lot. All right. So bye-bye, family.